Hey, you guys. So um, we are doing a sew-in today. Um, I'm using the hair that my client purchased is a Brazilian straight hair. It's from an unknown vendor. It's not from a site or anything, so I can't give you those, those details. But I do have three bundles. But she did bring three bundles, two 16 inches and two 14 inches. I'm going to start here with the 16 inch. You want to start with your needle. I use a straight needle because I'm more comfortable with a straight needle. If you prefer to use a curved needle, then do so. But what I did is on the first part, of, on the very edge of the weft, I actually penetrated the weft. And I have started to sew around the weft at this point because it's actually a lot quicker and I've heard people say it reduces on shedding. I normally wear wigs, so I don't um I don't particularly know if if sewing through the weft, you know, actually causes more shedding or not, but it it does make sense. So, I have started to sew around my wefts using my straight needle. I always sew in an upward motion and I sew under the weft and under my braid each time I just go around and around I don't do any type of loops or anything like that I just simply sew around the braid I will have a clip a little later that you can see in slow motion a little better what I'm doing I didn't realize my hand was so much in the way while I was recording this so you may have a hard time seeing but as you can see I go upwards from the bottom under the weft and under my braid Again, I do apologize for it not being as clear at this point. Once, when I sew the first two bundles on, I'm not going to cut the wefts at all. I'm going to fold the hair on each edge. And again, my hand is kind of in the way, but you can see that I just pretty much fold it over and I sew under, under the fold. To secure it, I do that about three times to make sure that the hair is secure. So that is where the fold is, and I just go under the braid that's on the very edge right there and under the wefts that are folded there together. Just want to make sure that that edge is as flat as possible so that it does not bunch up on the sides and you know it lays it lays very flat especially when you get around to the front because that's the part that you can see the most so you just want to make sure that when you do fold it you you reinforce that the part that you sew two or three times so that it lays down so I'm going to speed it up a little bit here in just a sec and I'm pretty much just going back and forth until I run out of weft under the weft under the braid each time you'll see that little rat tail piece um, when I when I sew across that part I actually just kind of sew right into it and connect it to the braid that is next to so you won't have any you know issues and it's not flying away or anything like that you won't even be able to see it so you can see a little better how I sew under the weft. And you're just going to pretty much sew from edge to edge. Like I said, if you're more comfortable using a curved needle, then use a curved needle. If you can use a straight needle, then use a straight needle. Just be very careful whichever needle that you use not to poke your client. <laughs> now I have um, reached the end of, you know, that piece of thread and I'm just gonna cut it and I'm just really tying it in a knot. I'm tying it in a knot, you can tie it in two knots if you want to, but when I start the next piece, I make sure that I start it in the area that I left off on the first piece because you want that part to be secure. So you don't wanna skip, you know, skip over in any sections to start your new thread. You wanna kinda sew right where you left off on the other one. Here's a picture and you can see a little bit the how the thread looks once you get done. 
Um, this is just me moving up, you know, towards the crown of her head, just simply going back and forth with the webs. I think I probably started on the second batch or the second bundle here. And I'm going to slowly start to curve around the front so that it's not thin on in the front of her head. And, you know, when the hair on the sides will be just as full. So there you can see how it should look if you use this braid pattern and this sewing method. And here we are um, at the top. And we're just gonna continue to, this is the 14 inch. I think I just started the 14 inch maybe at this point. I'm just gonna do exactly what I've been doing in the back, just going back and forth, back and forth with the wefts. So here we're going to slow it down so that you can you guys can see a little better how I sew, you know, under the weft and then under her braid. And I'm telling you this is ton this this is a lot faster than how I used to do it in the past and it's just as secure. I'm trying to think of any questions that I got asked on the last video. If this is done in the correct manner, you should not have any breakage from getting a sew in, nor should you have damage to your hair if it's done correctly and it's taken out in a timely manner. I suggest anywhere between four and eight weeks, just depending on your hair. If your hair is really thin, I would say take it out sooner because you know it can start to pull on, on your strands the thinner they are. But some people leave it in longer, but that's strictly up to you. What I will prefer is four to eight weeks because you need to be able to get to your scalp and actually give it a good wash, you know, in between that time. Anything longer than that is probably kind of stretching it in my opinion. But to each his own. So, this is like ugh, my longest needle that I have. I actually don't like it, but I just kind of load up all of my needles at once. And whichever one, you know, I grab is the one I grab. And I hate that I that I'm at the top with this longer needle because um, I mean it's longer and it's a little sharper so I just had to you know kind of go very slow so I would not run the risk of poking her in any type of way so after adding you know a couple more wefts at the top and I did cut the ones at the top as I said that's you know you saw the picture and now I'm just going to do some slight layering since I since she has two 16 inches at the bottom and a 14 inch at the top. I don't have to do a lot of laying, so I'm just going to take some some hair shears. These are not any particular brand. I really just got them from the beauty supply store. But I'm just going to trim off to kind of make that 14 inch bleed blend. I'm sorry into the 16, so there is not you know a line of demarcation of where the the bundles start. So just a little bit of cutting. You can, I don't have a specific cutting technique because, you know, I didn't go to cosmetology school and I have to keep repeating it in my videos, you know, for people to understand that there's not a technique that I use. This is just, I just eyeball it and cut, you know, how, how I see fit. So sometimes I cut, you know, holding the hair upwards. Sometimes I cut down. It just depends on the, um, it really doesn't depend on anything. I just do it in different ways. So, yeah. So, just trimming a little bit off the front to frame her face better. Just in case she wants to wear it straight. You know, she can just kind of bump it under and it actually frames her face. And then I'm going to go ahead and add some curls to it. I am using Golden Hots. These, I don't know what the name of these um, flat irons, but I have literally had them for about six or seven years they have been through the storm and the rain honey they are they are some soldiers I it used to I think it goes up to 450 degrees now it just goes to whatever degrees it was set on when I broke them last because I don't even have the little dial on it to turn the degrees anymore so when I plug them in they're on but it's all good I have another pair that I bought just in case this one just decides to completely die on me but these are probably the, I use these all the time, so they are really good irons, and they were only like 30 bucks when I purchased them, so you can't beat that. I prefer to curl 
with flat irons as opposed to curling irons, but you can get the same result using curling irons. I'm just more comfortable using flat irons. So now that I've finished all the curls in the back, I'm going to start curling the front. And what I pretty much do is I curl away from her face each time. I hold my curlers really weird, but I hold them, oh, I'm sorry, my flat irons really weird. I hold them up or you can, I mean, you can see how I, how I do it. This gives me the curl that I like and it just falls perfectly into place if the hair is already sort of layered then the curls will fall exactly where you want them to fall and I'm not using very small pieces of hair I'm, I'm using you know a large a pretty large section when I get rid of the curl not large enough so that the curls fall really well but not so big that you know you can't curl it in and, and all the hair won't fit in the flat iron so just have to gauge that And I'm just going to continue curling the hair away from the face on the other side. And this pretty much gets our desired look. Now, this part that's braided in the front, I'm going to use some Icy Fantasia Heat Protector Straight. You want to use a heat protectant on your, your own hair. I think that's a good idea to do to protect your own hair from heat damage when you have leave out. So I'm just going to, I just put maybe a dime size in my hand and rubbed it on her leave out. And I'm just going to flatten, straighten out her leave out to cover. And you guys have to go over to the uh, second video to actually see the final look. I'm going to you know, spruce it up a little bit and I'll see you over there.